G'day everyone, I'm Dr. Peter Price of Classroom Professor. Welcome to week 39 in the free math worksheet series. This uh, set of worksheets, this is for the second school week of 2013 if you're in the Northern Hemisphere and so it's another revision week. So this time we're looking at multiplication and revision and the worksheets this week come from the 10 minutes a day level 2 book multiplication and division revision and it's actually the last set of worksheets. So there isn't a particular strategy to focus on this week so I meant to keep that um, because it will include all the strategies. So once again as last week's um, revision set I mentioned then uh, for this week this would be another good revision worksheet set obviously but you could also use it as a form of a checkup to see how your students are going and learning all of their multiplication and division number facts. So quite a useful set. Um, just to quickly um, go over the strategies that um, are part of our scheme if you like or the scheme that we recommend. We, we have doubles so the two times number facts and of course for each one of these there's the, the division uh, inverse facts as well so dividing by two. Multiplying by 5 and 10 based on a place value strategy. Multiplying by 3 where we say start with a double of a number and then add one more. Multiplying by 4 which is double and then double again. Special cases of zero and square numbers. Multiplying by 9 with all the patterns that we can find there. And then the last three sets, the most difficult number facts, the 6s, 8s and 7s. Uh, for the sixes we build up from nine facts, so build from five times or from three times and then double. For the eights we can do double, double, double. And the sevens, there isn't a simple strategy for the sevens but again we build from nine facts. And of course in the cases of the sixes, eights and sevens if you leave those to the end then you'll have already done the multiples of those numbers by all the other numbers. So for example you'll have done six nines when you did the nine times, six fives with the fives and so on. So all that's really left at the end there um, because we've already done the squares as well is six times eight, six times seven and eight times seven. So uh, there's not a lot left over. I just thought I'd talk briefly about um, some basic ideas for a sort of overview lesson of number facts and sort of generic strategies that we can use um, or our students can learn to use themselves in learning these number facts. Once again I've got the magnetic tiles I've put up um, and again this is an exercise you could do with students that you give them material like this or just cards with numbers on or so on and ask them to find the number fact families, the groups of facts that go together. Again we've got this cloud with associated numbers in it. In this case it's 3, 6 and 18 because we're looking at multiplication and division. And once again those three numbers in a sense belong together for these number facts. So if a child, a student can learn to associate those three for these two operations then they should be able to um, come up with the four number facts. 3 times 6, 6 times 3, 18 divided by 3 and 18 divided by 6. And so the numbers are effectively recycled or reused over and over again. Um, and so we think that's a, a help for students to see um, yet again connections between number facts and how they belong together. Um, let's look at some material as well. And these um, counters are of course arranged in an array in rows and columns and that's a highly recommended arrangement for multiplication and division. Um, just on that point we shouldn't just scatter the facts around or e the counters rather or even just you know put them in groups because it's, visually it's not very helpful. It's okay when the numbers are small so if you did 2 times 6 and you see a cluster of 6 and another cluster of 6 that's going to be fine. But if you do 7 times 6 and you make 7 clusters of 6, nobody can see what that number is. Those arrangements are simply unhelpful. Whereas an array you can do other things with it. For example, uh, this array of course is 3 in this vertical dimension and 6 horizontally and we're multiplying those two together. We can see that if we took those counters and just rotated them 90 degrees we would then have 6 by 3 so we can see the commutative property of multiplication and the inverse facts, sorry not the inverse, the turnaround facts for each other, the 3 times 6 and the 6 times 3. 
Another one which was taught to me at university and I thought was a very clever idea is to make this into a division question and say, well, if we're dividing by three, here's the number that we're dividing, what will the answer be? And of course the answer is six. So that's a sort of combination of the written algorithm and the visual representation. And again, of course, we could turn that around and have six here and three there. So the students can see that interaction between the three numbers in this particular fact family, and you could do similar things with other facts. Uh, just on this particular one I mentioned before, um, teaching the six times number facts, here's an illustration of that that we're multiplying by six, we could say, well, do you know what three times five is? Because the fives are easier, let's add another three. Or we could split this in half, and that's not done very neatly, so we can say, here's three times three, here's another three times three. Six threes is the same as three threes doubled, and of course three threes are nine. Okay, so there are some ideas, I'm sure you've got plenty of your own, and I hope the worksheets are really useful to you and this video is at an end, and so I'll talk to you next time.